what is all this multiplication in fourth grade with all the boxes and weird stuff and why can't I just teach them the way that I learned it in school? If you've got these questions on the brain, then you definitely need to stick around in this episode of Math 345 Support. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah, but students in grades three, four, and five know me as Miss McCarthy. While I create tons of math videos for students, I thought it might be helpful to start creating some math videos for you, for parents, for teachers, for tutors, basically anyone who is looking to support someone in grades three, four, and five to make math make sense. So let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Okay, so as a teacher for over a decade now, I've seen a ton of strategies when it comes to multiplication, right? Different ways to solve it. I've seen the lattice method, probably like the lattice, Lettuce? What? What are we eating? No, it's called the lattice method. I'm not going to show you that in this episode. There's partial products. There's the area model. I've seen repeated addition. And of course, standard algorithm, which, which is the regular old fashioned way that you probably learned how to multiply. Now, here's the thing. Just like in life, there is more than one way to get to a destination, right? There's more than one journey one can take to arrive at the same destination. It's the same way in math. While sometimes it seems like it's pounded in that students must learn it this way. In my opinion, if a student can learn one way successfully and they understand what they're doing and it makes mathematical sense and they can reason mathematically with that strategy, then great. Now, as a teacher, I try to teach a bunch of different strategies to get one to really lock in. And that way students get a ton of exposure to the different types of strategies. So don't freak out, it's okay. If you know standard algorithm, the regular old fashioned way, that's okay. But my job is to show you some other ways too to help math make sense, okay? So let's do this. So in fourth grade, students might see a problem like this, okay? Let's say, Actually, I'm gonna change that to an eight. Let's make that eight. Let's do this. We've got eight times 5,194. Let's solve that first. And I apologize for the little lights on the paper. I'm getting a weird angle of glare. It is what it is. All right. Um, so what we have here, we have something called a factor here, and we've got a very large factor here. And a factor times factor equals what we're trying to figure out, which is called the product. The product is the combined amount or the total. So here's standard algorithm. I know I keep using that fancy word and that is probably the way that you learned how to do it in school. I still teach this way because frankly, in fifth grade, that's usually how they have to do it anyway. So I try to get them locked into it early. Now with multiplication, we know that because of a property, it's called the commutative property, meaning that we can flip flop these factors around and still arrive at the same product. Okay, the commutative property flip flop those factors, commutative, which is a song that I have on YouTube. So if I flip flop those factors, that gives me 5,194 times eight. And just like when we've been adding and subtracting, we wanna line up those digits, right? Nice and neat. So this is how you do it, right? You got eight times four is 32. I have students write it here. Ooh, it's high up here in the cloud and put a circle on it. Nice landing, dude. So, ooh, it's high up here. Nice landing, dude. Why do I do this? Because it's fun and it helps it help students remember how to regroup their numbers. I also circle right here because watch, eight times nine is 72 and 72 plus three. See, we've gone from multiplication to addition. We're changing that operation. That's why I have students circle it usually. Okay, so 72 plus three would be 75. Woo, it's high up here. Nice landing, dude. Again, sorry with the glare. We've got eight times one is eight, and now we add the seven, which would give us 15. Woo, it's high up here. Nice landing, dude. Eight times five is 40, plus one is 41. So our correct product would be 41,552. Probably the way that you learned how to do it, something similar to that in school. Ooh, these glares are going to drive me nuts. There, that helps a little bit. Okay, so that's standard algorithm. Now let's get to the fancy ones that your student is probably coming home with, or maybe you're a teacher and you're like, wait, how do I teach this? 
So we've got another one that's very popular now. It's called the area, excuse me, the area model. And what we're gonna do, you can take either one here, but I'm gonna take the eight here and draw a box. And what we're going to do is take 5,194 and expand it out. So we would have five is in the thousands place. It has a value of 5,000. We've got one, which is in the hundreds place, has a value of 100. Boom. We have nine is in the tens place, has a value of 90. And we have four in the ones place. And what you do now is you just multiply eight times all of these, okay? So we have eight times 5,000 is really like eight times five, which would be 40. And because we're multiplying with zeros in the remaining place values, we can just attach those at the end. So 40,000. Eight times 100, or eight times one would be eight. We've got two zeros, so 800. Eight times nine is 72. We've got one zero. And we have eight times four is 32 there. Now this is not our answer. Now we have to add them up. We have part of the products or partial products. Now we need to combine them all together. So make sure you're lining them up nice and neat. I'm taking 720 and 32 and adding them up. I just did all this and realized I made a mistake because look, this is 800, not 8,000. See, everyone makes mistakes. Let me do that again. Oops, I'm doing it again. Look at that. 720 and 32. By the way, if you are a teacher or a parent and you make mistakes, own it. Because if you can teach your students to own their mistakes and not blame anybody, and that making mistakes is just part of the journey, it's fine. Look, I even caught it because I was like, whoop, that's not what it was. All right, so we've got two, five, that would be 15, one and four. Oh my gosh, that looks so much better. Okay, so again with 41,552 is our answer there. Just uh, not gonna say forget that ever happened, but uh, that's not right. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, the last one would be partial products, which is very, very similar. Um, it kind of looks like you set it up as standard algorithm. And what you do is you multiply the eight by the actual value. So eight times four would be 32. Again, this is partial products. It's kind of like taking this one right here and we're going to flip it down there. I'm actually going to bump this up so you can see. All right. So eight times four, we know is 32. Eight times 90 would be 720. Eight times 100 would be 800. Eight times 5,000 would be 40,000 and you add them up that way. See how it's very similar to the area model. It's just kind of in reverse, right? You could actually do eight times 5,000 and put that first and eight times 100 and put that next. That's totally fine too. So again, just showing you a bunch of the different strategies here with this one, with the different types that you could have in, in fourth grade. Um, teaching them the regular old fashioned way standard algorithm is not bad. Okay? It's not a bad way to teach them. What The whole purpose with Common Core is to present multiple ways to teach them. And this actually, it's great for place value sense, right? And students, if they've learned their multiplication, there's not as much regrouping going on here, which is nice, but there's still room for error like you saw that I did. What I did right over here was I made a common mistake that students make by not lining up their digits correctly or by adding in zeros that weren't really there. So. This was a common error that kids make, <laughs> but it was a legit error. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. If you have a specific math skill that you would like for me to walk you through in an upcoming video, whether it be third grade, fourth grade, or fifth grade, just send me an email at McCarthyMathAcademy at gmail.com. Don't worry, the links are all below. Um, if you're on social media, I am too. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at McCarthyMathAcademy. You can send me your problem that way. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am a math teacher for grades three, four, and five, and 
I have tons of math videos for students in those grade levels. So if this video helped you to understand, imagine how much the videos that I create could help your students to make math make sense, whether they be your students or your children. So just check out my website, McCarthyMathAcademy.com. Um, that link is also below, so it'll take you right there. And I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time to understand the math that your students or that your children are learning and just taking responsibility to help them. That really is amazing, so major kudos to you. And I also wanna remind you that you were born for a reason. You matter and what you choose to do with your life matters. So get out there and change the world in your own special way. And I will see you next time.